questions are very theoretically like uh, the Hindu yoga and so on. I don't want to discuss the uh, Sabija Samadhi, Nirbija Samadhi and the differences. This is not very useful for our purpose now. Hmm? Uh, anyway, uh, another question is also a little bit theoretical, but Bhante is understanding uh, completely by direct knowledge of five skandhas or conditioned phenomena uh, or nama rupa or suffering of beings and the cause and origin of these conditions arising and perishing of these skandhas necessary f for one to attain supramundane knowledge of and liberation from samsara. Hmm? Uh, I don't know whoever asked that question, uh, but uh, uh, it is the peculiarity of Buddhism and it is in a way different from other religions. According to Buddhism, the Liberation is only possible when one has thoroughly understood the world. Hmm? When one has not thoroughly understood the world, then one may be imposing hmm, some concepts on the world. And precisely the middle way that the Buddha has discovered is freedom from imposing something and taking something away. Hmm? which is technically called Samaropana and Apavada. Hmm? Uh, we are, due to our ignorance, we are imposing something on our experience in the world or we are taking something away from our experience in the world. That's why we are deluded about the nature of our experience. So, uh, Rather than accepting and blindly following the concepts like God or like the soul or like the self, why not experience uh, yourself what it is all about? So the Buddha neither uh, 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 talks of the God nor denies the God. What he is teaching is just come and see by yourself. Hmm? So, uh, especially in our times, we are. Uh, more and more aware of the, of the dangers of the blind faith. Hmm? The faith is uh, the uh, most wonderful thing we humans have, but the blind faith is the worst of all things. Hmm? And nothing has caused so much suffering in the world uh, than the blind faith, be it in uh, the religion or in some uh, isms, uh, uh, communism, or whatever. Hmm? Uh, the uh, we humans are bound to be deluded by concepts, and the uh, uh, Buddha he saw very clearly this danger of uh, the beings being deluded by concepts. So, uh, the opening to the true supramundane experience and the all uh, the transcendence of suffering is only possible in all genuine religions by, uh, uh, by uh, transcending the world. There is no world without suffering. Only when one transcends the world, one will be tran 
able to transcend the suffering. So uh, the, in order to transcend the suffering sorrowly, one has to understand the world sorrowly. That's why the Buddhists emphasize so much impermanence. The law of cause and effect is nothing but, which governs the world, is nothing but impermanence. One who has meditated, he can see it very clearly. Whatever has arisen by causes and conditions, appears due to causes and conditions and disappears in the same moment it appears. This is a law of dependent origination. And this is what we are actually experiencing in each and every moment. Uh, in order that we get old, we have to appear and disappear in each and every moment. Otherwise, we cannot get old. It is not possible. And that mind, which is bound to the body getting old, is also appearing and disappearing in each and every moment. So, uh, this, uh, in order to transcend the world, one has to understand the non-substantiality of the world which we are experiencing with the mind, with a uh, mind bound to the body. The law of dependent origination explained that this mind bound to the body, was created by ignorance. Hmm? And because we cling to these sensations that we are experiencing by mind bound to the body, therefore we are bound to be uh, reborn again This is how the beings function in the world. Only by uh, understanding the sorrowly, one can sorrowly transcend the suffering of the world. Otherwise, there is always a danger of clinging to concept instead of reality. This impermanence of everything that we experience in the world is not a concept, it is a reality to be experienced. Only when it is experienced sorrowly we will be able to transcend the world. So, uh, this is one question. And here comes uh, another question. In Yogacara school, I don't like too much these theoretical questions, but okay. <laughs> In Yogacara school, it is said that all sentient beings possess eight consciousnesses. Uh, it is partially true. There are some books of Yogacara speaking of seven consciousnesses also, huh? but never mind, it's okay. The school of Xianzang and so on speaks always of eight. Whereas in the Pali Abhidhamma tradition, it is only six. Not only Pali, all traditions, except the Yogacara. 
in all traditions of Buddhism, there are six consciousnesses, no more, no less. I think the Yogacara commentators might have divided mind consciousness into three more groups according to each function. Uh, that is very much true. Like the six consciousness functions to process the input of the other five sense doors. Not only that, also concepts. Hmm? Uh, the seventh consciousness, Javana impulses, it has nothing to do with Javana impulses. The eighth alaya or store consciousness, this is Bhavanga. It is very much true. Hmm? The Bhavanga corresponds, it is also uh, mentioned by Xuanzang and by uh, other Yogacara literature, that uh, the Bhavanga of the uh, Theravada school is uh, the, just a different name for Alaya. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, I do not want to go too much into theory, but just for general information. In uh, Buddhism, we use uh, three names for mind. Hmm? Chitta, Manas, and Vijnana. Hmm? In Chinese, Xin, Yi, hmm? and Shi. Hmm? Now, uh, the meaning of Vijnana hmm, means differentiation. It is the aspect of the mind which is uh, basically concerned with differentiation. So, vijanati iti vijanam, that which differentiates, that is called vijana. Hmm? So, it is a differentiating aspect of the mind. It not only differentiates the input from the five senses, but it also differentiates, uh, differentiates concepts hmm? like truth and so on. Hmm? Uh, the uh, manas. Hmm? or E is uh, manyate iti manas, uh, that by which we think. Hmm? It is the aspect of the mind of thinking. Siliang. Now, the citta is the uh, aspect of the mind which accumulate. Hmm? Chinoti iti chita. Accumulate what? Accumulate the seeds of our previous experiences. Hmm? Then manas, because the alaya vijnana, the base consciousness, According to the uh, philosophy of Yogacara, is actually everything, uh, the base of everything we experience in the world. It is based on the, uh, on one hand on the senses and on the other hand on the outside world. Hmm? So it is everything we experience. So, the outer world that we experience is only the outer aspect of the con this consciousness. Hmm? Is the 
projection of the seeds accumulated in this consciousness. Now, the manas is then, uh, in the tradition of Buddhism, the base for differentiating consciousness. This base for differentiating consciousness is manas. Uh, since in yoga chara, the uh, Alaya is everything we experience. The manas takes the alaya as its object and thinks about this alaya as something being substantial, being self, belonging to the self. And the differentiating consciousnesses then are based on in this uh, uh, manas. Hmm? In That's how we function in the world. When we have attained realization, then these consciousnesses, hmm, the four kinds of consciousnesses, the five sense consciousnesses, mental consciousness, the uh, manas and the alaya, they will be transformed into four kinds of wisdom. Hmm? But this transformation is dependent on understanding of the alaya. So the alaya is a key to the system. Alaya is the royal way to realization in the Mahayana sense. Why in the Mahayana sense? Because this uh, alaya strictly speaking, does not belong to us. Hmm? So, when the alaya is transformed into the wisdom of the uh, universe, the mirror, hmm? all the, the so-called pravriti vijnanas, all these uh, uh, turning consciousnesses, uh, they will also become wisdom. So the uh, manas becomes a wisdom of the equality of all the phenomena. Hmm? The, then the six consciousness become the wisdom of wonderful seeing. Hmm? And the fifth consciousnesses become the wisdom of uh, accomplishments. Uh, now a more practical question. 
What do I do if in the middle of meditation I have trouble finding my breath below the nose area, when the breath is very subtle? <laughs> very simple. The breath is still there, only the person who is meditating is not there. <laughs> So uh, the subtle breath can appear either because uh, one uh, is uh, 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 falling asleep or it appears because the uh, one is experiencing more deep concentration. Uh, then the subtle breath is a challenge to the mind to become more subtle. If the breath becomes subtle and the mind is gross, then of course this situation happens. So the subtle breath has to be matched with a subtle mind. This is a process of learning anapana meditation. Anapan, learning anapana meditation is nothing else but learning how to sublimate the breath by experiencing more and more subtle state of mind. Uh, the gross mind cannot see subtle breath. Only the subtle mind can see subtle breath. Hmm? So if the breath becomes subtle and the mind is not subtle, then the, the uh, meditation on breath cannot progress finished. So, in uh, the treatise on meditation on breath, both the process of learning shamatha and vipassana on the breath is nothing but the process of sublimation of breath by uh, exercising more and more concentration and wisdom. That's all. If the uh, mind cannot distinguish the more subtle breath, then it has lost mindfulness, awareness. Hmm? Then it becomes a gross mind. So what to do? Uh, in always remember the breath is still there, only I am not mindful of it, that's all. So immediately uh, turn attention to the place where you usually observe the breath hmm, and investigate there. It, will, it is still there, only the mind is not vigilant. So you should see very clearly the beginning, middle and the end of this subtle breath, then the mind will become sharpened. Hmm? So we should never change the breath? Breathe in deeper or to find it? Leave it alone? Uh, if it helps, uh, but normally you should use a more subtle method because you have more uh, more mindfulness, more awareness, then it naturally comes. If you... <laughs> this, is not, this is not very good. You will get out of concentration. Hmm? So, uh, the, if the breath becomes subtle, it is a challenge to use more subtle method to stay with it. Hmm? Venerable Dhammadipa, two questions. When doing the uh, walking meditation, does one always have to keep his knees soft, slightly bent, 
at all time. <laughs> there is no such rule. <laughs> the uh, important is uh, that uh, the uh, uh, one practices mindfulness and awareness, hmm? and uh, one empties the mind of useless thinking. Uh, so, next question shows uh, the <laughs> thoughts of uh, uh, <laughs> the person who wrote it. Who will win the November election, Obama or Rob? <laughs> <laughs> the election will be won by more mindfulness and awareness. <laughs> <laughs> Please <laughs> try.
of their conditionings also. Hmm? And of what is to be done to keep them clear in mind, hmm? not to uh, let the mind be deluded. So the uh, this uh, power of recollection, the power of bringing the object clearly to the mind, is the necessary condition for uh, shamatha and vipassana. Without that, no question of shamatha vipassana. Now we don't have time, but maybe tomorrow I will talk more about the uh, memory or mindfulness, because it is a key concept for understanding also the process of shamatha and vipassana. So now let us recite the metta sutta and enough for today. <laughs>